because of uh, uh, pivotal issues on CMTV, we are happy that you are there. You have decided to stay put to your favorite channel, the CMTV. We shall be taking the last topic summarily uh, for this night. Uh, it is going to be the Anglophone crisis. Is negotiation and dialogue, is it a reality or a taboo topic? Because we are asking whether the negotiation or dialogue is a taboo topic or a reality, given that the outing of uh, the Minister of Communication and maybe some other government officials have always debunked the fact that the government have been dialoguing with uh, the separatists and uh, there are so many information that they have been dialoguing while the government is refusing. And uh, there are so many issues that are very conflicting is it like the government is ashamed to think that they have to discuss with people they have called terrorists? Are they coming back to their vomit or they are just doing the right thing? So I want to begin with you, Mr. Njomo Cyril. We are looking at the ongoing negotiation and maybe we followed by a dialogue. How do you look at it with the reaction of the two sides, given that even the separatists have different ideologies, they are in conflict, the government, the government is denied the fact that they are dialoguing, they cannot dialogue with separatists. Do you see it to be a kind of taboo? Before saying that it's not easy, uh, it's, not, um, it's not easy for a government to come back to its vomit. It's not easy for a government to leak its vomit. It's not easy for a father to take it in normal language to ask for forgiveness to a son that he is still feeding. Yeah. Yes. So, it is very clear that the government somehow has seen that he cannot push through this peace process without the conflicting counterpart. And it was time enough early or late as it might be to initiate even a broken leg negotiation with this counterpart which who has been identified. Yes. Because if they were not identified, I don't think on the fifth of January two thousand eighteen they could have been caught and detained. Was it 2019 also? Yes. The fact that they were extradited from Nigeria to Cameroon keep under a height for close to nine months without anybody having any information about them mm -hmm. was already an indication that they were already identified as major actors in the ongoing conflict. And so, it was just out of the same pride that you did mention in your question, an extreme, an ego, that the government refuted, uh, um, uh, undermined their presence in the just ended or a major national dialogue, what most people will call the monologue. <laughs> so, if Finally, the government have taken evidence of their weight in the evolution of this crisis and to finally initiate the peace process. Remember, this initiative is coming in within the United Nations Security Council Resolution uh, 2535. That the UN Secretary General came out with sometime in May, May 5th, calling on all conflicting parties in the world to initiate a ceasefire for the next 90 days following the untold misery imposed by the COVID 19 pandemic. And so, in such a context, you and I understand that. The government has not voluntarily, the stubborn government of Mr. Biapol, has not voluntarily taken upon itself to initiate this peace negotiation. 
there is an antecedent that almost obliges the government to do so. <laughs> because as member of the United Nations, we are bound by all the treaties that we have ratified to respect all the resolutions, especially those coming from the Security Council, because they have the veto power. So it's not a matter of shame or a matter of pride or a matter of coming back to your vomit. The government has have almost been forced to do so. Now, what is the, the practicality of it? Are we going to finally, you, will this finally yield to the lasting peace so desired? That is a question for another day. <laughs> now we are looking at it some people say uh, maybe the two parties are just too hard because uh, given the uh, marked dialogue or maybe negotiation that started uh, the separatists are giving some conditions they must discuss out of the country and maybe there must be a mediator and so on the government who does not want all those things now and it is said all of us want peace. All of us want peace. Do you see this um, negotiation and dialogue to become a taboo topic that does not need to be discussed again? It will never be a taboo topic again. It will never. Negotiation will never be. Negotiation, dialogue, discussion will never be a taboo topic in this country because if you know the rate at which people have suffered, the rate at which people are displaced, the rate at which people have thousands of people have died, people are refugees, people cannot go back to their hometowns. The discussion of this could never be a taboo because everyone wants justice before peace. And looking at the looking at the suggestions of the separatists, they are the one that the negotiation should take place out of the country with the third party. In conflict resolution, at times it's it's very important too. What the government should be thinking is that the, the common people are suffering. The layman who is suffering. Most government officials are living, are still in their air-conditioned offices on a daily basis, are still living their normal life. They come here to Boya to, and to the Northwest with, in good cars. But those of us who are living in ground zero, those of us are living in the Northwest and Southwest, we feel the pinch of the Anglophone crisis. Whether I like it or not, every family has felt the pain of the Anglophone crisis directly and indirectly. And even some of these government officials, they have felt it. And it is high time, it's high time, it's time now that we also soften our ego, both the separatists and the government. The separatists, because now the separatists, first of all, is in division. They have leaders abroad who are advocating for their own. The ones in prison yes. are advocating Sako and his own people. They are advocating. The bushes one, the and then also the separatists in ground zero, they are advocating. So we need, a, we need you know, in conflict resolution, that's what we call compromise. Whether you like it or not, we must compromise certain things. You must lose or you must gain. So whether the government or the separatists, we must compromise. We must be assertive. And if we are calling for honest dialogue, in a negotiation process, there should be that third party to end the Anglophone crisis. There should be that mediation. Because, and first of all, there should be justice first too. And they should, I think, if government also uh, grant clemency to all Anglophones who are in prison, and we should forget about their crimes, the, the degree of their crimes, because we want to bring uh, sustainable peace. And we now say negotiation can start. And those who are abroad that will be coming for the negotiation, they will not be arrested. And they can look for a neutral ground. A neutral ground where everybody have is free. The mind is open, the mind is free to air, to discuss the issue of uh, the, the issue of the crisis, where nobody on the dialogue table is senior. It's a senior brother. Nobody is a senior brother, nobody is a junior bro a junior brother. Everybody is equal. They sit on the round table and the third party is there to mediate. At the end of the day, the government can be able to convince that if we start, if we discuss penetration, can't you see that it can be better? You discuss these issues out. Make them understand, make the separatists understand too. Government should be open to them. 
Do you know that government can, if there's an honest dialogue, government can pull these people towards them? And that's uh, where it can the, only go to when this government also is also genuine. That's where the conflict is because people see it as discussing the negotiation or the dialogue is not necessarily become taboo because if the separatists say they want their independence first before they start taking decision, they are hitting no, it, on the fact that they are going somewhere else. Then the government is like making them that we are undivided, we stay, and then those who, because th there is the idea of these weapons that are coming into the country. There are some people in the country who don't want this thing to end. Then if we talk of negotiation, is it not becoming taboo when there are people who are instead those making people, them? Those people should be put to book. Those people who are encouraging, we need justice. There are people in government, we need to put justice. We need to sanction them. And there are people, they are mouth, the issue of hate speech too. We need to sanction, the government has to sanction them. Uh, I want to say that uh, whether we like it or not, it's only dialogue that will solve our problem. Whether we like it, at the end of the day, guns have never solved problems. Look at, uh, there's no way, there's no country in the world that guns have solved their problems. Guns kill, guns destroy, but only justice can bring peace. Because we cannot keep on saying that we keep on shooting. We keep on, somebody, there's nobody that ever won a war. No, you cannot win a war by guns. Even look at the First and Second World War. When it ended, they went to the, they went to the dialogue table. They went to the dialogue table. The League of Nations was formed. The United Nations Organization was formed. And I want to say that the African Union is still sleeping. The African Union, if we are, we are fighting for a system whereby you see that the African Union have been very silent on crisis of such magnitude that has been neglected in Africa. What is the power of the Afri forming the African Union that cannot even intervene in such crisis? So we are saying that uh, the Anglophone crisis, whether we like it or not, guns have never and will never solve a problem. And those who are abroad, they should social media leaders. They should understand that the common man is suffering. It's high time we all, as a people, we accept our differences on a dialogue table and solve this uh, problem once and forever. Guns will never solve our problems. And guns have never solved any problem in the world. Only peace through justice. Justice starts before peace. And government has to lower its shoulder. Government has to come out from its high horse and uh, call for a negotiation where it is inclusive and also try to get some of the points of the separatists and we see how we can manage the problem. Mr. Njomosiri, if we look at it, um, weapons of mass destruction keep on entering the country every day on the side of the separatists. Then we are talking on dialogue to bring peace, all of us want peace. Where to, where do you think these weapons, where, where is their, their, their pathway? Because if weapons can enter Boya, weapons are entering the Northwest region, where are they passing? Eventually, are the borders not corrupt? No way, do we put this weapon in Cameroon? The answer is no. The answer is no. But before, <laughs> since I introduced my first speech on this topic with the United Nations resolution, uh, I want to come back to it to say that the ADF force in the Northwest allows some UN cars to pass under camera and they make sure that they send it on social media. That was propaganda. They wanted to show how they are respecting the United Nations resolution uh, uh, that I earlier mentioned, 20, what is 2335, something like that. Okay? You are asking me where is the providence of these guns? I will tell you. You know, there you have attacked the issue of uh, international relations. Where country work through interests and not more friendship. It's as asking me why is it that we know where these leaders that are propelling hate speech on social media, that are hastily the continuation of the crisis, social media leaders, self-proclaimed leaders, they know where they are. Why is that they keep allowing them? And then you have dived straight into international relations. 
when it's difficult to understand why friends of Cameroon, other nations that would not like peace to be threatened in their own country, harbor and miss them, those who are instigating violence in other territories. And I can tell you it's a long topic that you are not here with a few seconds left to us to run up this program. Cannot dive into now. Okay, if we look at uh, Dr. Sako, we look at uh, Cho Ayaba, if we look at uh, Foncha, uh, the Foncha, Mashal, if we look at their different ideology. Because we are talking now of the negotiation and dialogue that everybody, most people are saying that it is becoming difficult and maybe a taboo because it can't really go. Now, if we look at the, their different ideology now, that this dialogue is almost coming. And they are on the other side. Do you really see things possible? Two things. Don't misquote these 90 days I've been given for ceasefire for a lasting dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bia government have not stepped down yet. If not, they will not go on air and they are denying even an initiative. That's the first thing that we should not lure our people to think that there is a move on the other side. Because if they have to dialogue, it is not the Bia government to decide who to dialogue for the separatists. Of course, yes. That was the mistake they did during the major national dialogue that yes. needs to be corrected as fast as possible. And now we have conflict, we have chaos among the separatists. Well, personally, I've grown up in a, in a very big family. I understand yes. those kind of play. Nobody wants to show that he's small. Even the last born will not accept that he's small. And that is how you should understand the 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 popcorn game yes. that is on that is happening on social media. Those who have paid the highest price, those that the government trapped from the early days, those who had an organized structure, those who really had influence, yes. will be the one who have a highest representation on the final dialogue table. But again, I want to insist on the fact that the 90 days that the UN have sat, set uh, uh, aside shouldn't be mistaken if government is initiating any effort of ceasefire it should be mistaken like a self-will coming from the bias regime the yaoundi administration to see an end to the untold suffering that have been rocking over northwest and southwest for the past four years okay um maybe uh, we shall still be discussing on this given that we are out of time uh dr busi ns this problem has been ongoing for four years now. And some pundits are like, the government has been playing on time, thinking that maybe the separatists will be out of weapons, food, and maybe some other things, and uh, the government will be the victor, and the separatists will be the vanquish. Uh, I want to say that uh, looking at the Anglophone crisis uh, between the, the military and the separatists, nobody will be victorious nobody will be victorious. The only way to solve the problem is uh, to solve the problem amicably. And to solve the Anglophone problem, uh, I've, I've always talked of the, the value of being genuine, the value of honesty. We can, our government officials have to be very honest to solve the problem. And the separatist uh, social media leaders also. They have to know that the history of this country, what they are saying is correct, self-determination, which the United Nations organization, they know that is correct. As look, look at the map of this country, we have Southern Cameroon, we have British Southern Cameroon, French Cameroon. It's true. But now we are in a problem. And the first issue is to identify the problem. Government in conflict resolution, you should be able to identify a problem. And if government have identified the problem, what is the way forward? Many people have suffered, many people's houses have been set ablaze, and you are talking of reconstruction. You don't reconstruct when guns are still, when they are still destroying. So at this point in time, we are pleading with the government that the government of President Paul Bia should follow what uh, the United Nations uh, Secretary General have said, Antonio. Gores, Gores have said, and uh, how can we do this ceasefire first? The military should be sent to their barrack 
why the police force and the gendarmes can be there in the field. The beast can be sent to their barrack. The government appeal in the days ahead can grant amnesty to more Anglophones in prison. And why not the separatist leaders? And they will call for a roundtable inclusive dialogue if we don't want to negotiate out of the country. We call for a genuine inclusive dialogue. We talk our own issues because four years is a great year. These are great years that have affected our lives that will never recover. Thank you. We are concluding, Mr. Njomo Siri, looking at the topics we've discussed. We have talked on the outing of the mayor of Boya. We talked on uh, Konak and corruption in Cameroon and the Anglophone crisis. What is your last word to this? Well, my last word to viewers is that uh, there is a certain theory, the Marwa Bamenda CPDM agenda in this country that you and I need to visit. Because when you see Marwa, they call Marwa the first girl of the CPDM. You see Bamenda, they call Bamenda the birth the, the, the birth village or the birthplace of CPDM. All these two political slogans were not engineered for birthday names or for baptism names. I will tell you what is hidden behind. Back to the three topics we have talked today, <laughs> man, they are all surrounded. If you see one thing that is cutting across all these three topics is the leadership. The issue of Konak, the issue of the municipality of Boya, the issue of Anglophone crisis, leadership. So, we are calling, still calling, even with the international body, for a more transparent leadership, for a more inclusive management style, for a more collaborative, what you call a collegia, that word came up so many times, we are calling, that was what we are trying to, to show during this edition of the program. I want to thank you, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Busi Enes, for really coming for this program today. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mambo Williams. Uh, I think that uh, it's our duty as uh, young, young men to build our country. Uh, I think that uh, we have taken it as a responsibility. We are not out here to downgrade our government. We are not here to downgrade the government. What we want is justice before peace. Uh, we are people who love peace, and we pray that the government of President Paul Bia should be honest to bring justice before peace, because peace can come before justice. Justice can come before peace, and we should do the right thing at the right time, because the pain is too much in the minds of the people. The cycle dissonance of the people needs to be resolved. The conflict of the mind needs to be resolved. The crisis of the mind needs to be resolved, because many at times when people are resilient, it's not all the time that people are resilient because they will, they will give up. People have given up because of pain, and the pain is too much. Thank you, sir. Well, before you conclude, uh, you give a conclusive word. This one says, uh, Mr. Psychologist, I doubt if the government is ready to negotiate because talking to, to now the military raped Babanki and killed people there. Last Monday in my 16, the military went and arrested people there. So, Mr. Psychologist, be honest with me. Do you think the government wants a solution, a solution to this anglophone crisis? Uh, Answer me. Okay. Uh, thank you, televiewer. I'm humbled that you are there watching. Uh, my brother, all of us want peace. Uh, and I think that uh, before we started the program, if you listen to me, I said that uh, there are cases where in, uh, in Biame, where we saw young people, I saw that I was on social media, we saw young people living because of their villages were being raided. And we are not, we are not supporting anybody. The military as a military is supposed to, the, the function of every military in every country is to protect the citizens and their properties. And I tell you that justice should be brought in this country. If any military, we know of villages that have been set ablaze, there's a blame game. And we want this problem to be solved. 
And I think that if President Probia is honest, let him call the military to go back to their barrack. That's what we're saying. Why the police force is there to monitor the situation? Why the military goes back to their barrack if we are genuine to solve this problem? Because both parties, the suffering of the people have been enabled by some group of people, we can call them the military or call them the separatists, the state act, the non-state actors and the state actors. So what we are saying is that the military needs to protect the interests of the people, protect the territory, because you just, we know of arbitrary arrest. You see somebody as a young man in the neighborhood, you, you just call him or are the separatists. Not, uh, those, those naming, those labeling, it's, it's not all that's factual. And I feel that the army and the bill are supposed to protect the territorial boundary of the people. We cannot be killing our own people. Okay. Being separatists, killing military, being military, killing separatists, it's not correct. We need justice to solve this problem. And President Pobi has to be genuine. There's no time because five, four years is a great time. Many people are suffering. It's just the, com because the truth of this story is that it's the common man that is suffering. The, 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 the cartels are fighting in the battlefield, the grass is suffering, and it's the lay people. When I look at this thing, you, you understand that here in Boya, people are not suffering. Go to the villages, go to Oku, go to Bafut, go to those villages, yeah. Kwakwa, go to those villages. Life is, there's no life there, Mr. Mojito. Go to those villages. Life is lifeless. Life is lifeless. Business is not moving. Farming, you see, even some of these common people, they have cops. They are raiding. The, they are, they are, some of their cops have been stolen. They are, they are raiding their properties. And so I said, people are suffering. They are moving. They are on the villagers are on the move. At one time, you see them going to hide. They are hiding. They are. I feel I that. I can see how emotional you no, are. No, I feel Your that uh, our government. We must have what we call <laughs> uh, emotional intelligence. As we call in psychology, you must have what we call emotional intelligence to really feel the pain of the people. Because if you are not put, if you, are, you don't feel the pain of the people, until you are there, go and go to your villages now. You see, you see, go to your villages. You see, there are no roads. I know of my village that we used to have a tar road, the ring road. There is no road. Grass have covered everywhere. Thank God the government is struggling to No, the government has to be honest to solve uh, this problem, sir. Okay. Uh, Molanjo uh, Mosiri, thank you for coming. It was my pleasure to be here and thanks for convening me for this evening festival, festival program. <laughs> Dear viewers of CMTV, viewers of uh, Pivotal Issues, here we come to the end of today's program. I want to thank you so very much, all the broadcasters, uh, the cameramen, we want to thank all the technicians for making it possible. I've been Moderator Mwambo William. We want to say wait for us again on Wednesday. We shall be